Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 Dreamcast review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Capcom vs SNK2 Millionaire Fighting 2001, which we never played it before, it's a fighting game. Uh, I believe like the first one of these reviews I did, it came out in Japan only. It doesn't really hinder you that much except for Groove Edit, because you need to be able to read Japanese to customise your own groove, but at, at the same time you don't need to customise your own groove, it's just an unlockable you can do to tweak a fighter's style. And personally, I think the way that the people who designed the game made them is the way that they should play. So, you've got Arcade Mode, Survival Mode versus Mode, all pretty self-explanatory. Training Mode 2, I've mentioned Groove Edit Mode, Colour Edit Mode, you just change colours. Network Mode was online, which no longer exists. Replay Mode is Replay. Option-wise, you've got quite a few things you can do. Controller settings, so customise that. Uh, game options, you can choose the usual. Difficulty, time, rounds, damage, you know, just things like that. Um, display sound and memory card are all pretty uh, self-explanatory too. Um, Alright then, so just quickly going into arcade mode, you can play a ratio match, a 3 on 3 match or a single match. So seeing as 3 on 3 and single match are pretty obvious, I'll choose the ratio match. Which, um, Alright then, I'll choose C Groove for the hell of it, just because I can't be bothered to choose another one. And let's choose a couple of characters, so Ryu is always a fan favourite. Um, I don't want to be boring and choose Ken, I'll choose King, kind of sounds like Ken, and Mai. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few um, different characters on this thing, and there's a couple to unlock as well. But, uh, right, I'll choose Ryu as me main, yep. Uh, the, the, it's one of those that I've definitely played fighters like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, where there's a lot more to unlock. This, it really, it has a couple of things like extra options, the groove edit, and you can unlock more points for groove edit because you're limited to 4,000 at the start. But there's only two characters, as I say, at unlock, which is God Rugal and Shinokuma. So there's not a lot there at all. But it's still one of those that it's worth playing through the arcade with the different characters to see their clocking sequences, even if you can't read them, because I can't read Japanese, so I can't. But um, it's just... Uh, it's you, you don't really need it for fighters. It's only really the likes of Injustice and Mortal Kombat 9 and that that has a proper storming mode. Everything else, it's just mainly about being daft. I mean, my favourite clocking sequence of all time is Street Fighter 2 Zangief, where he just does a Russian dance with the president of Russia. So it's just it's not for story-wise, it's just because it's in CN and daft. But there's nothing much else I can actually say. It, it's your standard fighter. Depending on which groove you choose, depends on how your super bar and that works. And people obviously are going to prefer different styles, as in, if you're an SNK fan, you're probably going to prefer those grooves. That's what they're invented for. I'm more of a Capcom fan, so I definitely prefer the Capcom grooves. Um, Gameplay-wise, I think the balancing's done quite well. I, I think it's an awesome lineup and cast of fighters. Graphically, I think it's fantastic. Uh, musically, I think it sounds great too. So I'll let you listen to a little bit of the music now. Be a mess to remember. So that was a little bit of the music and as you might have noticed I'm only fighting a team of two and that's basically ratio mode at work. It, it's to do with depending on what characters you choose and the powers and that. It's the same as the first one which if you didn't see my review of that one it was easier to spell that out because it did tell you the character valuation. So for example Akuma was a full team's worth because he was that good whereas there's characters like Blanca and Dalsim weren't that great so you could have four of those style of characters. It's a decent system, and I do think it works well, but I do prefer the the first game of the series. I think its system works much better, which is a shame, because I probably prefer a lot of other stuff about this one. Um, all in all, if you're into fighting games, it's well worth looking into this. I think it's one of the better ones, and it's just a shame that it never really came out outside of Japan on the Dreamcast. I think it had an Xbox release, and possibly a PS2 release. But as I keep saying in a lot of vids, it's well worth investing into a fight stick for these sorts of games because I do think they play so much better. Every one of these reviews I've had to record with an actual pad and I've, I haven't half noticed just how much more hindered I am. And it really is a shame because it, it just is a fantastic game but you do need the right equipment for it. Oh, but just to very quickly go into a bit more detail about the ratio system. Basically, 
And as you might know for the last review, and I've mentioned it kind of in passing here, that you got a maximum of four points to spend and characters were worth certain points. Well, it's a same on this, only every character can be worth whatever you want. So see a Yuri here, and um, Sagat. Then you can go to end after only picking two people, and you can then assign points. So you can have two twos, or you can have one three and a one, or you could have just chose one character and made him a four, or you can have the team of three, like I've already shown where you've got a two, a one, and a one. Your team can never go over four points, basically. It's in one way is a better system because it means that no one's favourite character is being left out, but in another way, I thought it made more sense with the first game because it does kind of make sense that Akuma and Ayuri, however you pronounce it, I-U-R-I, the SNK guy, and Bison and, you know, the big bosses in, in the franchise's histories, it made sense that there were fours and threes and, you know, and whereas the weaklings, the ones who you're supposed to struggle to get up to them to fight against them, which it always was in the arcades because the boss's difficulty was always higher, then I thought it made more sense to have the system like that, whereas this, it kind of makes more sense out of the fact that anyone's favourite character can be a level 4 or a level 3 or a level 2, but at the same time it, it takes something away, it takes almost a bit of the charm away out of it, but that is ratio mode fully explained, I think, I don't think there's anything else I can mention, so that is now the end of the vid, and uh, well, until next time, which uh, I've still got plenty of fighters to go up. So there we go then, that's been the review, I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion, so instead I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments then feel free to ask and I'll help if I can. Also if you did find it helpful don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there and don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time this has been Demon212. Signing off.